Welcome back everybody, you're watching White Mountains Today. Chris Peru with one of our local experts, Jeremiah Beach from White Mountain Nemba, is joining us in studio. Thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Chris. And we're gonna talk mountain biking. So whether you're looking for uh, a trail tryout or wanna get into the, the competition scene here in the White Mountains, Jeremiah's got just the ticket. Uh, first and foremost, White Mountain Nemba, you guys are, uh, are, are obviously huge instrumental in maintaining and building a lot of the trails here in the White Mountains, uh, they don't just appear by themselves. Uh, tell us about some of the trail projects that you guys have going on. Uh, some of the trail projects that we have going on right now um, are focused around um, finishing up our climbing trail over on the uh, Pine Hill project with the Upper Saco Valley Land Trust. Um, and that's a really cool project that we're partnering with uh, Recon Trail Design. They're gonna complete um, a bunch of the other loop that's going to create a new race course for the Kennet High mountain bike team. Nice. Um, so we're having a trail work weekend um, in, uh, in June where we're going to go and finish that up, tune it up, get some hands on there and get it all dialed in so it can be ridden. And you said hands, do you need more hands? Can people volunteer to help oh, you out? Oh yeah, volunteers all the time, you know. Um, we use the Golden Volunteer app. I don't know if anybody is familiar with that or not, but it, um, it's linked to all kinds of nonprofits and uh, it'll show you all kinds of opportunities to um, spread the love and, and lend a hand. Very cool. Well, tell us a little bit about this the trail system. So it's Pine Hill, mm -hmm. which if you are, it, I call it kind of Burger King Hill because it's up the road from Burger right. King a little bit and between that and Kennett High School. Um, so how do you access it and what's what are the trails like? Um, so the way that you access it is off of Eagles Way, uh, which is the road that goes up to Kennett High. Um, the Land Trust just put in a new parking lot. It's on the right hand side of the road as you're going up towards the high school. Um, and that is the access point at this, at this point. That's where the climbing trail starts and where the loop will come around and join. Um, right now, the, uh, the climbing trail is a machine-built trail, mm -hmm. um, you know, pretty gradual grade. It's designated for mountain bike climbing or two-way hiking and walking, so it's a multi-use trail. Uh, you know, everything out there is multi-use on the, on the land trust. Nice. Um, but it was the uh, recipient of a uh, NEMBA signature grant, um, which our former President Marianne Dunphy um, applied for and received. Um, so we've given that, those funds to the Land Trust um, to help fund the project. So awesome. Yeah. Uh, and so that is in June. What, what date is that? Um, that is the um, 17th. And yep, then you June have 17th. two more coming up in July and August. Correct. Trail systems yep. are going to be serviced by those. Yeah, well, pretty, uh, loosely they're going to be the East Side Trail Network and the West Side Trail Network. Um, you know, as the summer goes on and we identify the areas that really need work, uh, that's when we'll dial in on exactly what we'll be working on there. All right. And if you can't wait that long, if once a month is not enough, you guys actually do weekly uh, trail service, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's been uh, TNT, Trail Night Tuesday, that's been going on for over 20 years. Um, it's informal um, and um, we post information on Golden Volunteer and on all of our social um, for, the, for the White Mountains chapter. Um, so generally it's a uh, 5.30 meet somewhere. Um, we did uh, Stony Ridge last week. Um, so went up there, we had a good group and uh, cleaned things up, trimmed things back. Um, we work with the, uh, with, the, um, with the people that adopt the individual trails as well so that we can give them some guidance on uh, what they can do on their own. What's your, what's your take on the general mountain biking scene here in the Valley? Because this is, this is kind of a throwback for people who may have been watching this channel for a long time back when it was in the RSN days, even right. you were one or one of what I think of as one of the pioneers in getting the mountain bike scene going here in the Mount Washington Valley. You went to uh, Colorado for quite a while. Mm -hmm. You've been back a handful of years now. What's the difference in the scene from when you left to when you came back? Oh, that's a, that's a really interesting question. So many things have changed. Um, you know, there were a lot of us that were involved. 25 plus years ago um, when mountain biking was still a relatively new sport in this area. Um, you know, Rob Adair was another instrumental person. He's the one that um, formed the White Mountains chapter originally. Um, and, um, you know, just through partnerships with local land managers and the Forest Service, you know, things have really gotten to a really good place now. We mm. have, you know, in excess of probably 100 miles worth of trails that are available to ride. Um, in our area. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty amazing. Um, you know, really, probably one of the biggest changes um, has been in equipment. 
you know, we're a long ways from the days where we were riding around on 26-inch rigid bikes and, uh, uh, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe walking more than we were riding, um, but it made for good stories, right? <laughs> this is a tale between my legs kind of uh, confession. One of, so when I moved up to the valley in 1998, um, I thought I had a mountain bike. I thought I knew what mountain biking was. I didn't. I was a flatlander when it came to mountain biking, and I went out with uh, one of the group rides that um, you were at the Red Jersey at the time that you Correct, guys were yeah. orchestrating. And uh, we did, I brought my rigid fork mountain bike. I think I was wearing work boots. <laughs> and at the time, good thing I was like really young and in shape because I was able to like, you know, keep it up. But it was after that I realized, yeah, I need a need some more technology. And, yeah. it, and it was in like 1998 or 99, which was right after the ice storm. So not only did right. I not have the right bike, but uh, the, the terrain was a little bit rough too. Yeah, that was a mess. That took a long time to clean up after that. It was, I forget where we were, somewhere behind um, Tuckerman's Tavern in Intervale mm -hmm. along the- The Mount like, Surprise Trail. Yes. Yep. And I just, it was, it, I, it was good for me because no one could ride their bike. So we all were just carrying our bike through what seemed like the Vietnamese jungle, basically. Yeah. Um, good times. Yeah. Yeah, that trail's <laughs> actually never really recovered, unfortunately. Really? But, yeah. Uh, well, there are a lot of options uh, in place of that nowadays. Yeah, uh, let's talk a little about competition because mm -hmm. you have brought back uh, the S Summer Mountain Bike Series. That's right. Yeah, the Summer Race Series. It was originally started in the parking lot of the Red Jersey Cyclery in, I think, 1994. I think the first race was around three kegs in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but since then, you know, it's grown into you know, quite an event. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's come and it's gone. There's been different people that have uh, kept it alive. And um, when we came back uh, from Colorado, it, you know, we just had a lot of people that was asking, hey, are you going to bring this back? Are you going to mm. make it happen again? And so we did. Um, and uh, we've changed it up a little bit. Um, there's a few things about the race series that are different now. Um, each race, we donate proceeds to a local nonprofit. Um, so, like for the Rogers Crossing race coming up, we'll be donating those proceeds to the Bartlett Rec. Great. Um, and the original intent of the race series was always to get um, kids and families involved. Um, and so, racers 14 and under are free, mm -hmm. always. Um, so, you know, just want everybody to come and hang out and have a good time. Um, we've also kind of moved out of the valley a little bit. We have two races we host in the valley, and then we have two other races. One's in um, Wolfboro, and the other one's over in Gorham. So right. um, it's nice. So yeah. it's basically once a month throughout the summer, different mm -hmm. location across yep. the White Mountains. First one's in Rogers Crossing. What's nice, too, is you have different categories. So you've got the beginner, the sport, and the, the expert classes. So yep. something for everyone. Yeah, we break up the juniors in two classes, too, you know, because kids develop at different rates. Yep. So we want them to have a good time. We also have an uh, open class. Um, where, you know, open or cruiser class, whatever you want to call it. And um, we have a lot of uh, folks that just want to come out and ride the course and don't really care about the competition, but right. want to get out and ride it. Um, so you can come out and do as many laps as you want or as few laps as you want and get a time if you want or not. So That's great, too, because especially if you're a kid who's never done it before and you want to get your feet wet and give it a try, if you get blown away by the course and left in the dust, you'll probably never want to try that again. Right. So having a beginner category and where people can kind of, you know, get into the racing scene at their own pace yeah. uh, is a great idea. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, we'll have kids go out and we'll have a parent shadow them as well. Um, so, you know, we, we try to accommodate everybody we can. Um, for the most part, the categories that we have set up are flexible enough to, you know, so everybody has a good time. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to lead into now from the Summer Race Series into the Kind of the biggest mountain bike event of the summer, the 24 Hours of Great Glen. Yeah. You're back. You, your, uh, your company, your shop, ProTune, is going to be offering support. Yeah, absolutely. Mechanical support. Yeah, yeah. It's a, um, it's a cool thing for me. You know, um, we were there for the first one. I uh, camped in the back of my truck during the hurricane. <laughs> that was quite a time. Um, <laughs> so, and we were there for many, many years providing neutral support. Yep. Um, so it's fun to kind of come back to the event. Um, you know, it's definitely evolved and it's a, um, a much more mature event now, but um, still a lot of fun. It is yeah, a lot of fun. It, there are still kids races and yeah. all sorts of things. So it's, it's family friendly, but uh, I think we're all getting more mature is what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah, all exactly. Right, before we let you go, I want to get some, um, obviously, you know, the trails around the White Mountains. If someone is watching this and all this mountain bike talk has made them want to go for a ride, 
Give us a, a green, a blue, and a black for different levels of mountain bikers up there. Green Circle, where would you recommend? You know, uh, the Marshall Conservation Area is an awesome place to start. Um, it has, you know, greens and blues. Um, but it's a pr fairly compact area and you can get a lot of good riding in there without having to get too far out. And a lot of times, you know, that's more of an inhibitor mm. um, than the actual difficulty of the trail. Yep. Um, so that's a nice compact area. You know, there's, you know, I don't know how much the actual mileage is in there because you can ride it in loops and loops and loops and loops. But you can go and spend a few hours in there and, and, uh, and have fun. Um, for a blue trail, um, personally, I like the, um, I, I like the, the Mo area. Um, so the mineral site's a classic, mm -hmm. Tent Boulder, um, Stony Ridge, I think that's a good um, intermediate, has some climbing, has some descending, has some technical stuff. Um, and then, you know, for the expert level, um, we have on the east side, there is um, Outer Limits and Twilight Zone, and that's a good climb and good descent. Um, if you're looking for more uh, gravity um, enduro type riding, then there's the Hurricane Zone, which has a bunch of options there. Yep. So, you know, we have a huge variety in the, in the valley of great riding, so. Yep, it has just exploded over the last decade. Yeah. Um, Jeremiah Beach from Protune and White Mountain Nimba. Uh, anything before we let you go? Let's go ride your bike. This has been great, what a wealth yeah. of knowledge. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, fun. We appreciate you coming on and giving us some tips. And we'll see you at the, the race series and definitely 24 hours of Great Glen. Absolutely. All right, if people want to get in touch with you uh, from Nemba, what's the best way? Um, the best way is to email White Mountain WMChapter.org, and that will get everybody on the board, um, including myself. And you can also uh, follow you on Facebook and yeah, join Facebook, as a group. Um, also on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, so there's you know several ways um, to get a hold of us there. And then the race series is uh, SummerRaceSeries.com, and that has all the dates on there. And if you've got a broken bike, this is the guy to fix it. Protune, which is now in um, the form, Yep, the former Margarita Grill building. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So right back in the pocket there, we started the red jersey almost across the street. Yes, they yeah. should call it uh, Jeremiah's Crossing. <laughs> yes. That, that should be the new name yes. for uh, the Glen back, Junction Back there. in Bartlett. All right. Yep. Jeremiah Beach, thank you so much. Uh, You're watching you, White Chris. Mountains today.